with Main LA in general, we always were interested in artists who are using more of a poetic or oblique approach. Our process or our exhibition was built in large part before the pandemic and the social uprisings of 2020, and now is being read in the light of a world post. But I think it speaks to the potency of the subjects embedded inside of the works. We are sitting in front of a blown up artwork by Hediel Colty in between the two spaces of the exhibition. We're also in one of two versions of the show. Here we are at the Huntington. There is a versioning and a mirroring between the Hammer and the Huntington where each artist of the exhibition has a work in each museum, which creates a sense of this uncanny uh, presence somehow. Déjà vu. Déjà vu, exactly. Yeah. A curated show can kind of like evolve in yeah. a way that moves just beyond the curators, but also thinks about the public and how they're also involved in broadcasting, distributing yeah. culture. We started talking about three threads that became these through lines uh, through which the exhibition is weaved. The first thread is entertainment. I think we were less interested in entertainment as an industry and more in thinking about the tool of entertainment um, that can be worthwhile for artists to explore in their own uh, practices. You have the work of Matthias Poledna, who's an artist that we're really excited about because of his ability to use really very sophisticated tools of, of the entertainment industry and film in his work to create these excisions of narrative. Mm -hmm. Everything that he puts in place is so uh, of the industry. Given Matthias and his sophistication of the tools he uses, there's no privileging, you know, in terms of like the different levels or tools of cinema that kind of like emerge throughout the show. Not privileged in a particular way of engaging audiences. the leveling of the high and low also dovetails with our interest in horror. We were both interested in the way that horror is usually used as a kind of Trojan horse to introduce political ideas, uh, social criticism. Some of the subjects that are dealt with dystopic political situations, they're even more timely um, yeah. today. One of the linchpin pieces of this particular iteration of the show is Sabrina Tarasov's Beyond Baroque. What she opted to do was to create a kind of haunted house that would embody the ethos and the aesthetic to create this really experiential way of presenting archive and meditating on how you present or embody a community. In a way, thinking about like Monica Mioli's work, how both bodies of work at the Huntington and here mirror each other in a way that provide language. The installation at the Huntington gives language to what's here. I feel like that does happen in the mirroring. There is a nice correspondence in a way with the presentation that we have here at the Huntington of Monica Maioli as well, which similarly is presenting paintings of the first national gay magazine, Blue Boy. They represent these vibrant young men at their prime. The work is also a meditation on death because it presents these men right before the AIDS epidemic in this moment where so many of them were lost. So Mario, uh, similar to Monica, he has paintings here that are inspired by teen angels, but also kind of engaged at prison population. So there's poetry, drawings, you know, this generational idea of care, you know, in terms of revisiting an archive with Mario, it ended up being his archive, his personal archive that inspires the images that he makes. Yeah. With Monica Maioli, there was his dialogue with the existing Blue Boy archive that proved really challenging, partially because there were different visions for how the archive and the content of the archive could be. So there's this stacking of time that ends up happening with a lot of these archival presentations where we're looking at something that had or was able to speak to a public in a certain way at its inception and then is now being read in a different way.
We have been exploring uh, what we call the fourth wall, which is this tool used in theater and cinema to build fiction and to create a sense of um, suspension of disbelief in the viewers. Uh, the suspension of disbelief is actually permeating the political sphere and the, the social sphere in general, and the fiction is global. The exhibition in parts has these unfinished walls, these stud walls, that very literally almost kind of humorously mm -hmm, break. <laughs> speak to the breaking of the fourth wall or the dismantling of the apparatus. So there's this unraveling that kind of happens just even structurally in the exhibition that we present. Considering the exhibitions are in these two very far-reaching venues, we decided to also activate that space in between with interventions by artists within the city and really use the city as a site for the exhibition. And those we did by inviting artists to present some of their artwork on billboards. These artworks by Larry Johnson end up being presented at a smaller scale within the gallery. So creating a little bit of a slippage between the fiction of the exhibition and the real life of the billboards outside of the museum. Through many artworks, uh, there is actual physical mirroring happening with the viewer sort of finding their image reflected within the artwork. And that happens with um, Arya Dean's piece, uh, it happens with Candice Williams' pieces. And in several moments of the exhibition, there is this kind of reminder that you are part of this fiction and you should be aware of it. These works that aren't necessarily statues per se, but they could be paintings, photographs, um, bodies marching. It's kind of like these monuments that once were, that are now no longer. So the painting kind of comes to represent a monument in a way that we wouldn't think about a monument and represent histories that have been forgotten and that have kind of like fallen to the wayside or kind of like looked over, or glossed over. You know, what shows up personally to kind of like connect to a monument? History ends up being written by those who have the authority to write it, but that these kinds of monuments allow that upending, which I think is very connected to black news. Hey, hey you, hey you, hey, hey you, where are all the American poems about Harlem number runners and barbershop conversations about colored faces on colored TVs? This is Black News. But anyway. Khalil Joseph talks about it, you know, he works with a cohort of film editors and, and researchers and, um, and he builds this two-channel presentation that conflates news clips with viral videos. And that whole ends up being a meditation on the news. And the presentation has super polished. Right. But then it's using these like different modes of image capturing from cell phones and so forth. I'm even thinking about like Aria Dean using yeah. GoPros to make this play. Right. Instead, she had to kind of like rework the project due to COVID and she created a one man television play circling back this whole idea of using different tools of capture I feel like somehow this idea of mirroring that we've been talking about a lot around the show um, also has something to do with the idea of empathy. Serve Serpes has two presentations. Her process has been for this kind of work to go around town, around an institution, around a place where the exhibition will be staged and to scavenge materials left behind. Their moment in the light or essentially that moment of value through the act of the performance. Due to COVID, she encountered all these limitations and wasn't able to come with her physical body to stage them. So now in this state, it's just kind of like objects just kind of like scattered about. And I think, you know, that she hasn't assembled them. We have to kind of like maybe think about their value removed from how they would look as a sculpture. If COVID has changed our show in one way, it's by integrating this idea of absence somehow, or of possibility. I feel like many artworks became a potential for something. Uh, and it's interesting to think about what's the difference between the actual thing and a potential for something, and how could that work, and how is that adapting? To crudely summarize, it is a description of total blackness, total despair. I guess there's a nice segue to Nicola L yeah. because the piece took a very different um, signification, I would say. It is this cube where the viewer is supposed to enter um, in this extremely colorful and furry and sensual environment. People can dive in, touch each other, cuddle. <laughs> and here in this environment, it's become incredibly hostile. That's really deadened. It ends up being a very anthropomorphic representation of 
what art is without bodies. As an exhibition, Mainali 2020, we always intended for it to begin when it would open and for it to become the site for conversations and for us to think further through the artworks. The subjects that existed before are still present now and all the more poignant.